The Bracelet, a short story by John Storrs. The old woman stood on her porch and pulled her coat closer about her. And the cedar tree looked the other way. The winter wind grew stronger and her beloved tree no longer tried to shield her, but seemed to help the wind blow against her, and she was cold and sad. Before them, the snow lay round about, marked by the ballet of a mouse over once ploughed fields. Soon this white lace cold will work young boys, shoveling snow from the wooden sidewalks, cause shopkeepers to give away candy to finger some children while their mothers gathered fixings for fruit cakes, and while men will find their Christmas cheer at the local tavern, even in the middle of November. How could she do it, thought the tree? How could she sell me? I who have sheltered her from the cold of winter and shaded her from the heat of summer. Soon Jim, the woodsman, would be cutting the fir and cedar trees for sale on the United States market. It was a long way from Quebec to Chicago, and to be thrown in a truck with the other trees seemed sheer torture and an indignity to the proud tree, because it would be lying there, dying, little by little. Hadn't the old woman's son planted me with his own hands for his mother before he went to war, never to return? Am I not a living memory of that son? And now she wants to sell me for a little money, thought the tree. The old woman looked again towards the road for Jim. It was just after an early winter's ground covers a browning shawl, and at the hour of the hungry wolf's howl. Jim journeys a road that fought and won the battle of dust and growing shadows while he tried to hold the truck on the road. His truck showed the wear, but it was still adequate for Jim. Even the hole on the passenger side with a spring extending from the seat cover, which would later force his girl to move closer. Ah, here he comes, said the old woman half heartedly. She had many memories in her tree. Now others would have memories to last a lifetime because of her beautiful tree. Jim had given her more than a fair price because only this tree would do. It was the tree he had been searching for. The truck came to a screeching stop right in front of the old lady and the tree. Jim took an axe from the bed of the truck and soon the tree was felled. Tears crept over the old woman's face. And she reached her withered hand into her coat pocket and took out a paper with a string on it. Wait! Wait, I must tie this note to the base of the tree, for I have to know who buys it. Jim fixed his eyes on a bird sleeping on the wind, afraid to come down, down to a critical world. Jim's graying hair parted on the wrong side, and the wind combed its uneven edges. He placed the tree in the truck and said goodbye. While the truck started, the old woman's hand gently let go of the tree's branch. The tree waved goodbye, too. As if racing with a fallen leaf carried by a breeze, the truck moved slowly, and the tree felt homesick. Dalewood Elementary soon came into view, it had been a long, long way to Nashville. Suddenly, there were doors opened by two children, as if the doors were of some great cathedral, and the tree found itself in a large auditorium, and the children stood gazing in wonder at the beauty and bigness of this cedar tree. Mrs. Gilliam, the principal, untied the string and lifted the small note from the tree and hastily sent for a teacher who could translate French into English. The teacher translated. 
This cedar tree is my beloved and favorite of all my trees, and soon it will die. But first you will adorn it with candles and small crystal prisms, so the light from the hollowing candles will shine through, and a silver star will catch a ray from the star of long ago. This cedar was planted by the hands of my son. I probably won't see another Christmas, so I wanted my tree to enrich the lives of others as it has mine. It has become a special part of me. Please let me know how it was received and if it looked happy. Several weeks later, a small package and a note were received by the old woman. The note was in French and in a child's handwriting. Everyone agrees that your tree was the loveliest they had ever seen. There seemed to be something holy about it. It was happy, and we could not burn it. So we made cedar bracelets from it, which each child and teacher can keep always as a remembrance of this special season and year. Enclosed is a special bracelet, made just for you, carved from your beloved tree. The old woman laid the note down and placed the bracelet on her arm. And the old woman went to sleep. They were together. 